I am really thrilled uh, to see you uh, on a Saturday, right? <laughs> Absorbing this information and taking it all in, things that will help you on your road to law school. So thank you for allowing me the privilege of sharing just a few minutes uh, with you. Um, my name is Troy Riddle. I am the Assistant Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I'm the Chief Diversity Officer for the John Marshall Law School in Chicago, Illinois. I'm a second generation lawyer, right? So it's a second, I mean, second generation, second career. Second career lawyer, so I decided at some point much later uh, than many of you in the process that I wanted to be a lawyer. And I can honestly say that I love what I do, right? And I love being a licensed attorney. And I have a very different perspective about law school. I probably won't share too much of that um, with you, but I think it was, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but it was also the most rewarding thing and the biggest accomplishment of my life to date. Right? Um, unlike you, I didn't have any focus when I was an undergraduate. I blew a full ride scholarship trying to figure out what in the world I wanted to be. I didn't know. Um, I thought about law school. I talked myself out of it. Um, I ended up uh, taking a business track and uh, did an undergraduate business degree and a, an MBA. And then finally, kind of securitously, I ended up back in law school. Um, Back in 2012, uh, Evangeline asked me to um, write a piece for her inaugural pre-law uh, diversity magazine. And I submitted an article entitled, Lest We Forget the Intrinsic Value of Legal Education. And at the time, law schools um, and legal education were getting a, a lot of bad press. Um, primarily due to the economic decline and, and the, the dearth of uh, big law um, jobs, right? Um, but I thought it was important to remind uh, future and potential law students of the intrinsic value of legal education. So, because if, if students of color, in my opinion, considering law school bought into that narrative, uh, a critical mass of lawyers of color would never manifest to continue the fight for progress and equal protections for every American. So we often get so caught up in the dollars and cents of law school that it's easy to overlook and to forget about the, the, the non-monetary value that it provides. Now, I am not suggesting that money isn't important, right? Uh, or that it should be a factor um, for consideration, but I am suggesting that it shouldn't be the factor, right? Um, I believe that if you marry your skills and your abilities with your passion and your purpose, the money will follow. And so today I would like to remind you, uh, remind some of you, wake others of you, to the fact that there's a struggle that continues in this country. And now more than ever, the legal profession needs you. So one of my favorite quotes by Frederick Douglass is on the screen, where there is no struggle, there is no progress. In fact, um, I love it so much, I used it uh, in my personal statement. I used it to open my personal statement on um, my law school application. And in hindsight, um, I probably would have told my naive self not to do that because somebody on the admissions committee might find it tried or a rogue then kind of question my judgment as a future lawyer, right? But I did it anyway and I got in. So here we are. So we have uh, Frederick Douglass who's born a slave, right? Forbidden to learn to read, write. Like, it was just off limits. He defied that system of oppression to become a self-taught self social reformer, abolitionist, orator, writer, statesman, becoming one of the most famous intellectuals of his time. Somebody who's forbidden to have an education. So why did he risk life and limb for education? I believe he understood the intrinsic value of education and the privileges and benefits that come with it. So why else would they keep education from people of color, right? A little scary. So in case you hadn't realized from watching the news, there's still much progress to be made in this country. Sadly, there isn't much difference between what was happening in 1963 and what's happening today. So in 1967, Dr. King so I think prophetically stated 
that many of the ugly pages of American history have been obscured and forgotten. A society is always eager to cover misdeeds with the cloak of forgetfulness, but no society can fully repress an ugly past when the ravages persist into the present. America owes a debt of justice, which it has only begun to pay. If it loses the will to finish or slackens in its determination, history will recall its crimes and the country that would be, history will call it a country that would be great will lack the most indispensable element of greatness, which is justice, right? That statement rings just as true today as it did in 1960s. But I'm here to remind you never to forget and never let others forget. I want to challenge you to wake or stay woke, as the young people say, and rise to the challenges facing this country and the world. Law is our most powerful weapon with which to fight disparity, erosion of civil rights, bigotry, and the seemingly ever-increasing list of phobias that work to marginalize and criminalize people of color. And so law school is a training ground, an intellectual boot camp of sorts, that will prepare you for the fight. And we need you in this fight. So my decision to go to law school was very calculated. Um, I'm not sure when I had my epiphany, but I started looking at who was running this country. And what were those credentials, right? And so I became at some point keenly aware that lawyers were everywhere. They were leading billion dollar corporations. They were on Capitol Hill, pundits and news anchors on television, running nonprofit organizations, and of course, in the White House, right? Um, I then made a conscious decision to obtain the credential that so many of the movers and shakers and policymakers had, and that was a law degree. Because I realized that if I really wanted to position myself for opportunities and to do my part to make the world a better place, I needed to be in the rooms and sit it, sitting at the table where those decisions were made. And so today, I encourage you to take your seat at the table. The fact that you are here at this conference when you could very easily be somewhere else, at home, in the bed, watching TV, <laughs> on the gram, on Facebook. It says a lot about you, and so I applaud you for being here. Um, law school would be challenging. Like I said, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I loved it in, in a sort of sadistic way, but it was very, very difficult. Um, um, what's important, I think, because law schools want diverse applicants, they want a diverse class, is to bring your authentic self to the application process, right? Um, during uh, one of the interviews, uh, Master P was talking about um, how an our ancestors found some kind of way to make rhythm and keep rhythm. And so me, I'm, uh, I kind of view life as this dance, right? And so um, it resonated with me as a music lover and a person who views life as a dance on so many levels. Uh, imagine that people systematically and systemically oppressed, finding a way to keep their rhythm. And so, I encourage you to dance like nobody's watching. When I first heard that phrase, um, it kind of hit me. I thought, what, what does that really mean? And I thought about myself as a little boy. My mother was a Motown lover, and she used to play the Supremes, and I knew every song that Supremes and the Marblets and uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, and uh, I would just dance. I would just dance. And when no one was watching, I was really dancing, right? <laughs> and as soon as someone came into the room, I'd stop. I'd just shut it down. I encourage you to dance like nobody's watching. And I also encourage you to do that because no one but you can dance your dance. You have a purpose. Don't stop until you find it. And if my assumptions are correct, it will lead you to law school. Find a law school that fits you, that will support you and prepare you 
for the work that needs to be done. Because there's no better time than now, and there's no better person than you. Thank you.